AnimatedAnatomy.com. Hello and welcome to Animated Anatomy. In this lesson, I will be talking about the urinary system. I will be talking more closely about the anatomy of some organs in this system. The urinary system, also known as the renal system, consists of two kidneys, the right one and the left one. Here, what you see here is the urethra. It exits the kidney and it drains the urine all the way down to the bladder. It should not be confused with urethra. And urethra is actually here. It's taking the urine from the bladder and it goes here through the penis and it exits here. So the urethra and urethra are not the same thing. There is only one urethra and there are two urethras. The purpose of the renal system is to eliminate wastes from the body, regulate blood volume and pressure, control levels of electrocytes, metabolites, and regulate blood pH values. How does the urinary system does that? The answer to that question is here in the kidneys. Basically, there are two important things in the urinary system. That's filtering the blood and second process is urinating, basically getting rid of the urine. So the process here of filtering the blood is vital for human life. About one to two liters of urine are produced every day in a healthy human, although this amount may vary according to the circumstances such as fluid intake. If you take more fluid, of course, you can produce mere, more urine. The female and male urinary system are very similar, differing only in the length of the urethra. The urinary system can be affected by the disorders and diseases of other systems. For example, here this is prostate. And prostate is part of the reproductive system. The prostate can grow in older men and that way it can prevent the urine from leaving the bladder. Other diseases such as hypertension or diabetes can also affect the urinary system. The blood pressure is really important for, for the filtering of the blood here in the kidneys and the nephrons. Kidney diseases are normally investigated and treated by nephrologists, while the specialty of urology deals with the problems in the other organs of the urinary system. Gynecologists may as well deal with certain issues considering the female gender. Now let's go to the main organs, I would say, in this system, and those are the kidneys. The kidneys in humans are located in the abdominal cavity on the each side of the spine. Here you have the right kidney and here is the left kidney. You probably can already notice that the right kidney is lower than the left kidney. The left kidney normally goes from the 12th thoracic vertebra all the way to the third lumbar vertebra, while the right one is always slightly lower. The reason to that is, of course, liver. The liver is organ that is unilateral organ. It's only on one side. And that's why the human body is, of course, not symmetrical. There is also heart and many, many other organs that are just unilateral. And because of that, the right kidney can also be smaller as well. Resting on the top of kidneys is adrenal gland on the right and adrenal gland on the left. If you look at from this perspective, you will notice that the upper parts of kidneys are somewhat protected by the 12th and 11th rib. Each adult kidney weighs between 125 and 170 grams in males and between 115 and 155 grams in females. Now if we remove the skeletal system, we are just left here with kidneys. I will also remove the parts of the endocrine system so we just look at our kidneys. The kidney is a bean-shaped structure having a convex here and a concave border here. A recessed area here on the concave border is the renal hilum, where the renal artery enters the kidney and the renal vein and the urethra leave the kidney. 
here you can see the renal vein and here you can see the renal artery entering the kidney. Both of the kidneys move downwards on the inhalation in the lungs. The kidney is approximately from 11 to 14 centimeters in length, and 6 centimeters wide and 4 centimeters thick. The substance or the parenchyma of the kidney is divided into two major structures. The outer part called the renal cortex and here you have the renal medulla. The renal cortex is the outer portion of the kidney between the renal capsule on the outside and the renal medulla on the inside. The sections of renal medulla here and here are called the renal pyramids. Between the renal pyramids we have the cortical columns and cortical columns are simply the projections of the cortex. The cortex contains the renal corpuscles, the renal tubules and also it contains the cortical blood vessels and collecting ducts. The renal cortex is the part of the kidney where the ultrafiltration occurs and also erythropoietin is produced. The initial filtering portion of a nephron is in the renal corpuscle located in the cortex here, which is followed by the renal tube that passes from the cortex deep into the medullary pyramids. Part of the renal cortex, a medullary ray, is a collection of renal tubes that drains into a single collecting duct. The urine then enters the minor calyx. That's right here. And we have, for example, here one more minor calyx, and this here is the major calyx. The urine then goes simply here, and it goes through the urethra and goes outside. You can see here the vein is also leaving the, the kidney, and this place is called the hilum. That's what I already said. Now I will just quickly explain the, what nephron is and I will not be explaining this in details because that is not anatomy. And, but however I will create video about the histology of a kidney and physiology of kidney. So this here what you see is a nephron. There are two general classes of nephrons and those are the cortical nephrons and medullary nephrons and both of which are classified according to the length of their associated loop of Henle and this here is the loop of Henle as you can see in this one the loop of Henle is really long you have the descending limb of loop of the Henle and you have the ascending limb of loop of the Henle now what is this? This is basically the blood gets filtered out here. You can see here the blood vessels entering the Bowman's capsule. That's where the initial um, filtering process happens and then that's what's filtered out of the blood goes here through the proximal convoluted tubuli and it goes down to the loop of Henle. This here is a distal convoluted tubuli and it enters here the collection duct. In the collection duct, of course, we have the urine from other nephrons as well. So now I will illustrate combined when you have a macroscopic image of a kidney and then I will illustrate it with the histological image. Remember, this is just an illustration. It doesn't look anything like this in a real scale. First, I will remove these arteries that are confusing you. So here you have the interlobar artery which turns into a arcuate artery around the medulla and then we have the <coughs> smaller arteries the cortical radiate arteries and then these cortical radiate arteries give away the blood to the structure called the Bowman's capsule and that's where the blood gets filtered out. Then the blood from the Bowman's uh, capsule goes back through the cortical radiate veins and then through the arcuate vein and then down there 
back to the renal vein. Now I will have to make this image a little bit more clear so I will remove other details so I can point out what I really want. Uh, this here I said is the medulla and I just explained how the blood gets here and it gets filtered out here. The next thing you have to know is actually what happens with the blood once it gets filtered out. So the blood gets filtered out here and then it's going uh, this part as a in a cortical part as a proximal convoluted tubuli. Then it's going down as a descending uh, loop of Henle, part of the loop of Henle, and then it's going up as an ascending part of the loop of the Henle. After it reaches the cortical part again, it turns then into a distal convoluted tubuli, and then it's going in the collecting duct, right? It's entering the collecting duct, and here, in this collecting duct, there are many, many tubuli that join, join, and down there it's getting drained, everything that's filtered out of the blood. And in this process, when this what, what's filtered out here, it's going through the proximal convoluted tubuli, then the loop of Henle, and then back, and then the distal convoluted tubuli, a lot of things are taken back into the blood, right? It's taken back into this vein, and it's going back down in the renal vein. It's getting back to your bloodstream. If it was not this case, then you would lose ridiculously huge amounts of blood, uh, you not blood but but fluid. You would have to drink so much and you would have to urinate so often, like five six times in, in in one hour or something like that. And remember, this is not the real scale of all these structures. This is a magnified illustration, and you should know that there are millions and millions of nephrons, and, and, and there is no way that this is a real uh, size of a nephron. It's just an illustration so you can understand how it looks like. Okay, so here we see our 3D model again. This is where all it happened. The filtering of the blood, the blood, uh, the, the, what's filtered out, it's going down through the ureter. It enters the bladder, the bladder gets full, and you release the urine through the urethra. So Urethra here, you can see the urethra, don't confuse it. Urethra and urethra are not the same thing, okay? Hello everyone, I developed Animated Anatomy that you can purchase on animatedanatomy.com. I put them links down there in the description, or you can click on a link here in a video. If you're not going to purchase my software, then at least make sure you leave a positive comment, subscribe, or like my video.